All right, so welcome back to our barn house bathroom renovation. Today is day nine. Last night we got all the walls painted and they look awesome. It is super bright in here, way better than the nasty walls that was in here before. We also got the shower waterproof. So today we're gonna start setting the tile in there. So the first thing I gotta do is find a level line along the bottom to put a ledger board to start the subway tiles. All right, so now we are setting up our ledger board and I'm trying a trick that I read about that seemed pretty cool. But uh, we're going to start about two tile runs high, okay? So these should be, uh, I think they're three by five or six or whatever. No, three by six, I guess. And anyway, so we're basically going to come up about six inches. And what I'm doing is I'm using masking tape. Because I have red guard on here, I want to not have to drill holes or, you know, put screws through it. But you could if you wanted. You could just slap up your ledger board and put screws in there. And once it's done, you know, when you're done with all your tiling, put in some caulk, let it dry, ready to guard over that, and it's ready. But the trick I saw was pretty cool. You put several layers of masking tape on there, and then we're gonna hot glue our ledger board up there. So anyway, what I've done is I brought my masking tape a little bit lower than the height of two of these, because we wanna make sure our line is level, and you kinda of wanna work off the lowest spot of the shower pan. So even though I leveled it when I installed it, it could still be a little off or whatever. So uh, we're going to come up too high, so basically our first run of tiles that we actually stick to the wall will be the third, you know, the third run, and then the bottom two will get stuck later, and that very bottom one will get cut because you need just a little bit of gap above the shower pan for caulk. So all I'm doing is I'm going to set this up. I made a little mark at six inches, which is the height of this right here, and I think I'm going to go just a little under that so I can definitely cut it. All right, so I'm using a little tiny level here which is not the best idea but it is what I'm using and I'm going to put my ledger board up there I'm lining it up to that six inch mark and I'm going to drop it just a little bit maybe an eighth of an inch and then I'm going to level it out all right and then I will grab where is it right here I'm going to grab my pen oops I'm going to make sure it's up. okay ah uh, come on okay bring it up I got it level now I'm going to mark it with my pen so I can line it up later real easy. And then all I'm going to do is put three squirts of glue on here. I read about the size of a nickel or a quarter. Just three uh, you know, things of hot glue and glue this up. And then we're ready to start tiling after that. Now I'm only going to do the back wall first. And we'll go all the way up and get it done. And then we'll move on to the sides. Then when everything's done, then we can run those bottom two rows. So. It's not too complicated, but I thought this little trick using masking tape was pretty cool at the red guard because we don't have to actually penetrate it and then, you know, possibly get a leak. So anyway, I'll start gluing this up and we'll see how it turns out. Here's a little close up of that line. So there is my six inch mark, which is the top of the tile. And we come down, you can just barely see it, but we come down about an eighth of an inch. So then we brought it all the way to the corners. And then from that corner out to the front of the wall, the front of the tile, we just used a four foot level there and drew that line and checked it and it's all good. So now we're ready to actually install the ledger board here on the back panel and uh, start putting the tile up. All right, so my hot glue is heated up. So I'm just gonna put some on here. Doesn't have to be a huge glob. Put some there, put some in the middle and then on the other end, I think I need a new glue stick here. All right, I'll put some over here and then I'll throw on my ledger board here in just a second. And now I will line it up to the line I just drew and just wait for it to harden and then be ready to go. Wow, it's stuck already. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now that our ledger is good to go, it's time to mix up the mortar for the tile. And the other day when I was putting it on the cement board, I did it wrong. You're supposed to put water in first and then mix in the uh, powder. And they have measurements on there. And uh, I mean, we don't even have a full 50 pound bag now, but they like so many quarts per bag. Well, if you mix up that much, it's gonna be a mistake. So I think the best idea, at least what I'm gonna do, is just put in water, I have about, I don't know, two inches of water in there, and I'm just gonna start pouring in my powder and mixing it up until I get the consistency I want. You want a nice thick, like peanut butter consistency. So let's pour some in there, whoops. And you don't wanna breathe this stuff too, it'll get everywhere. Let's put a little in, see how that turns out and uh, just keep mixing it until it gets to the consistency I want. Okay, that was definitely not enough. It, not enough. That was way too watery, so we'll go with more. 
And we're going to have to dust this place again. Try some more. Alright, so I'll just mix and keep getting there until it's where I want it, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So I kept mixing and adding. It probably took about five or ten minutes, and that's about what I want right there. That's like a nice thick peanut butter. It's not too runny. So with this modified uh, polymer uh, thin set type mortar, you mix it. You know, like I said, about five or ten minutes, and then you gotta let it sit for ten minutes to kind of I don't know if it flashes over or whatever they call it. And after ten minutes is up, then you want to stir it again for about another two minutes or so, and then it's ready to use. Now, if you see here, I just put a couple inches of water in there, and then I mixed up the uh, the bucket. It's maybe a third of the bucket, not quite halfway. You don't want to mix up too much because you only have about maybe hour to two hours of working time. It, probably more like hour, hour and a half. So if you get too much, then you're going to just have a giant thing, a solid mortar in there by the time you're done. So don't go too crazy with it. So now I'll show you one more thing you got to do before you start tiling. So I'm waiting for that mortar to thicken up for 10 minutes. I'm checking my uh, ledger board. I think it's okay. I mean, it still seems a little wobbly, but I think it'll hold weight. If it doesn't, I can always just go back through and add a couple of screws, and then when we're done, I'll just have to fill in the holes. But I'm going to try out this uh, tape and uh, hot glue method. Okay, so one more thing you got to do. If you look at my shower, it has three walls. Two of them are open, and one of them, we'll call it closed. The ones that are the uh, wall that's closed, you want to find center, all right? So I found center. You can see a drill line all the way up. And I'm doing that because that's where we want to start our tile. That way you work out and then when you hit the edges, you can cut your tiles to fit. Now our shower just happens to work out where the subway tiles are the exact length to go across. So, it, you know, it works for us. But in our uh, downstairs um, bathroom when we redid it, we did have to cut a few. So you want to start in the center and work out. Now on these walls, these outer walls, it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on where you want to end. But since ours are just going to come out till we end, we're just going to... Um, you know, once this one's up, we'll just start our tiles and we'll work from the back wall forward. And we found that we're going to be able to end just a little bit in front of the shower pan, which is what we want. And we have these little bull nose pieces for here. And then uh, one more thing, I guess I'll go ahead and show you. We're using subway tiles, but we're not doing the regular uh, brick run or whatever. We did that downstairs. We wanted to try something different. So we're going to try a basket weave pattern. So, you know, just two up, two across, two up, two across, two up. We thought that'd be kind of interesting. It's just something a little different, and I haven't really seen that done too much. And it's going to be mostly white, but uh, we're going to actually have two stripes of solid gray, just to have a little extra detail. So it's a pretty simple design, but I think it'll look pretty cool. So now, once that mortar's dry, I'll start applying it. All right, so now that the mortar is ready to go, I just slopped a bunch on there, and I'm using a quarter by quarter, so one quarter inch by one quarter inch square trowel, and just make sure that the peaks are holding, they're not falling over or drooping. It seems to be right, so I think it's mixed really well. And uh, I'm not sure if you can go any direction or up or down or sideways. We just decided to go up and down. Uh, I don't know why, but we just did. So uh, if you're doing a regular subway run, you know, where you run them like this and then the others go in half, it'd be easiest just to start in the middle with two of them and put them right here in the line. I totally forgot that line we drew on here got covered up, so I actually transferred it down to the ledger board. But if you're doing a regular subway run, subway run you can do it that way but since we're going with the uh, basket weave we're actually going to put our bottom ones like this oh i should also mention i wiped down the top of the ledger board i, th I think it'll help and keep this from <laughs> getting glued down to it so i'll lay my first one down and put it down just squish it a little bit make sure it's got a good seal kind of suctions to this and i'm putting my second one down same thing and from what I understand, you can space subway tiles however you want. You can buy spacers, but they actually have kind of a pre-built-in, uh, they kind of flare out a little bit. So when you, when you just touch them together, there's like a 1 16th inch gap for grout. And that's what we're going to go with. We just like that little thin look. So I got mine in there. They're squished on real good. So then I'm just going to run my second row, or second column, I guess I should say. Put those in there, squish them good. And I won't mess with putting that one on just yet. I just want to work horizontally right now. The actual laying of the tiles, I think, is fairly simple. It's the huge mess that this makes that's no fun. All right. And then one there. Yeah, that worked out perfect. We just have a little tiny gap, which will be totally fine. Okay. Make 
should have gone on there. They're squished on real good. And I'll put these two in. All right. You can just kind of double check, make sure that there's not, like right here, there's mortar squeezing out. So I actually want to wipe that off. You don't want that to dry. So get rid of that. Really kind of dig into it and get it out. Because you want grout there, not mortar. Looks like a little bit over here too. And it's, I mean, that first run is, is the most important think because if it gets a little offset if something's off I mean it doesn't seem like much if it's just a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off now but when you go up six feet it could be way off you know so try not to screw it up so now I can do the second run and uh, let me grab some tiles and I'll put them on next oh also I should mention that um, you can see I only went up a little bit you only want whatever you can work with so Whatever you tile you can lay in about 10 or 15 minutes, only put that much mortar on there. You don't want to do the whole wall because it'll dry by the time you get up there. So let me run the second one and we'll see how it goes. It should be pretty simple. All right, I'm about to apply more mortar and uh, you're supposed to use the, there's like a flat side to it first. And you just use it to really slap it on. And then you use the trap, the um, notch to actually make the little notches. But when I bought the notch, it had notches all the way around, so I'm actually using two different trials here, so it's an even bigger mess. So I'll slap some on there. This stuff is really messy too, it gets everywhere. So you gotta be real careful when you put this on, that don't get all of your tiles you just did. Alright, so put some on. And I'm just putting it on pretty thick, like that. Do it a couple times. Let's be careful not to make too huge of a mess with the runoff fall. There we go. Some on. This part is not fun. It's very messy and a little, a little bit frustrating when it, it's hard to work with. Laying the tiles is satisfying. There we go. All right, we'll see how far that gets us. So using a little quarter touch here just to kind of spread it around a little bit. enough to do another two runs. pretty good it's still nice and gooey it's not too um, heavy or anything I'm gonna run down this corner I got a little bit thick on the wall over here I don't know if you can see it but I also want that drying on me there's also a little on the tile over here I'll clean up all right ready to go and then again I'm just starting in the center and working out so the actual t laying of the tiles is simple and it's kind of like painting the walls or all the stuff we did yesterday, it's very satisfying when you see big change happening. So keep on going. So I'll finish out this wall and then I'll show you how we do the sides, which is really simple because we don't really have to work from the center there. We'll just work from the corner out. So anyway, there we go. That's a, my super simple subway tile layout. I'm sure there's more professional ways of doing it, but this works for us. So let's keep on doing it. Okay. So now we're at the point where we're going to add one of these little shower, uh, corner shelves and we did notice we had one of these in our downstairs bathroom and it's a, like a full-size tub so it didn't seem that big and here it's a little bit big but we want something in here we didn't build a, a niche or anything so anyway it's going to line up with the top of this run right here so we have to make a couple of custom cuts so when we set it here that means that this tile is going to get cut a little bit short and then the ones under it are going to get cut in half so i think what i'm going to do to make it simple is figure out exactly where this lines up and then I'm going to take my, let's, let's see, I want to flip it around. 
I guess I could line it up. I guess I could kind of hold it oops, behind there. Pull the butts up. And then I'll just run like a marker on the back side of this tile. And then I'll take it out to my little tile cutter, cut it, and then we bring it in. It should fit. I'll probably also cut it a little bit short so there's a gap because we're actually going to caulk around this later. So it, it don't have to be exactly super tight. And the same thing for the bottom ones here. They'll uh, they'll just run the full the full height right there. I think it'd be okay. I'm about ready to cut my little tiles, and I bought this super cheap little tile cutter, and uh, it was actually a pretty good deal. I went to Menards, and to rent a tile cutter, it was this big giant thing like the size of a table saw, really huge, and we only had to make a few little cuts. And it was like forty, I think it was forty nine dollars for the day for however many hours, and then it was so many you know dollars per hour. Well, they had these, this little tiny four inch tile cutter clearance so they're getting rid of them it was only $27.99 so to buy one it was cheaper than to rent one so if you're next to a uh, or close by to a Menards go check and see if they have one of these because that's really cheap it's like probably half the price it would have cost to rent one for a day so it's kind of loud you have to put a little water in there because it's a diamond blade that runs water and uh, it does spray up here and when you cut it probably will spray you with kind of like a you know powder mixed with water so it has a little thing here where you can adjust it to exact measurements or you can just kind of wing it like I'm about to do here and uh, I'll just line up the mark I made earlier with my blade and then I'll just line up my little fence there yeah, it should be good enough so all right right about there tighten it up it's kind of loud and it, it cuts okay though okay, here we go turn it on it's probably gonna spray me with the uh, powdery water <laughs> clean cut way better than one of those little manual ones that you have to drag and snap so not bad for 27 bucks and here we go here's the back wall all finished with the back uh, basket weave pattern looks pretty cool we've got the gray stripe I'll mention that here in just a second go up and then at the top we had to cut some a little bit bigger than in half and if you're wondering how much mortar that took if you remember what I made earlier I used about half of it so we got to really get cooking on this where it's gonna set on us before we can finish the uh, other wall um, right here in the corner, we measured to uh, make sure that thing's going to fit, but we're actually going that uh, little corner shelf, but we're going to install it later after even this wall is in. So, what I did to hold everything in place is I just cut some extra pieces of tile to hold them up. And the, uh, these tiles here, when I cut them earlier, were a little bit short, so I ended up having to put a couple of toothpicks on top. But now it's nice and level, so once everything sets and is nice and hard, and, and these aren't going to start drooping, you know, when it's dry enough to not do that then we'll be able to mount this in. And it's a little bit different process. You have to like really put a lot of goop behind it and all that and then kind of um, angle it slightly so water come out and you have to tape it up and all that. But I'll explain it later. But anyway, we got that back wall done. So I think we're gonna move to this one because we have a couple of holes to cut and uh, we just kind of want to get done. So we'll start working on it next. All right, so now that the back wall's on, we're working on the side wall. And I just started from the corner and I'm moving this way and I tried to give it just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch back here, just so it's not completely touching that. And later on, we'll go through and caulk it. Then we got our pattern here. It ends just a little bit shy of the edge of our shower pan we put in. So now we have these little bullnose pieces that have a little rounded edge. And let's put it here at the end, and that's going to be our uh, our trim. It'll just go all the way up and down. And uh, there will be a piece under here, and it's actually going to have to get cut to fit around the uh, shower pan another little piece down here in front of it so anyway that's kind of how we'll trim the ends there all right so we got up to a point where we're gonna have to make a cut around the little uh, faucet spout thing here so I put two up and I just kind of held them in place and I drew on them with a marker to kind of rough in the shape that I wanted and I ended up with a shape like that all right so then I took it out to my saw and as you can see I just cut I kind of cut an angle right here from where my lines were a bunch you know that I actually drew Cut that and then I cut a bunch of these little fingers and it should fit pretty good. It's pretty close. I mean, it's going to be covered up anyway, but just get as close as you can. And then what you can do is you can actually just take take it on your saw and nick each one of these off or you can just tap them off. And that will get you pretty close. And then uh, when you go up, it'll fit pretty good. I mean, it's, it's close, but I think it'll be good enough. And uh, it's 
pretty much how I, how I cut the circle there. I mean, you can see it's a little off, but whatever, it works. All right, so it's been a few hours, and we now have both sides put up here. We still got this one to go. Let's kind of show you how it's looking so far. Looks pretty cool. And uh, what happened was once we got up at the top, we had to custom measure all those pieces and trim them all. So these pieces measure three by six, but all these top pieces up here are about an inch and seven eighths. So we had to cut them down a little bit. Also, the bull noses here, we noticed they were actually a little bit shorter than the regular subway tiles. So we put a little piece of cardboard in between them to help keep the gap even. And those turned out really nice. And as you can see right there in the corner, we just put more uh, spacers in there and uh, we scraped all the stuff out of there so they're not going to stick. So once these all harden up, then we'll put the um, shelf in there later. And then right here on this end right there, we are going to have to add just a little sliver of a piece of subway tile to go on there. So now what we got to do is I'm going to clean out this bucket. So that bucket I made did two of these walls, so that actually did a lot more than I thought it was going to. So I need to clean these out because it's starting to harden up now. So I'll just totally spray it out. We'll start fresh. And we'll do this wall, and it should be a lot easier. There's no holes to cut out, no corners. This one's just straight up, so I think we can get this one done pretty quick. So earlier I said that on these walls you can just work from the corner out, but I'm finding that's bad advice. I would probably still go ahead and find center and work from there. We had no issue up to about the roughly five foot point where the two different boards meet. And I guess when they were when we put them up on the wall, something was a little off or whatever. So now the wall is not exactly 90 degrees. So now I'm finding myself having to slightly trim just like eighth of an inch off the end of some of these. So I'd recommend uh, I guess no matter what side you're doing, go ahead and work from the center out and then that way if you ever have to cut any, you know, it will work out fine. I, I guess it kind of depends on your pattern too. Um, if it's uh, the regular subway style where they're all offset, you may not notice it as much. But ours, I mean, there are solid lines everywhere. So if it's a little off, it's very noticeable. So anyway, I guess that's my mistake. I thought we could, get, we could make it work, but it, it didn't quite work out like I thought. We found that this technique works well too. Instead of just slapping the goop on the wall, just transfer it onto here, all right? And then as I'm putting it up, it goes on nice and smooth. Also, this brand, I'll, I have to see what brand it is. I think it's Tech brand. It smells interesting too. It kind of smells like a chocolate covered frozen banana. So, the smell is definitely not anywhere as bad as Red Guard. It actually kind of smells pretty good, but we're getting super close. We're already on the top half here, so we're just about to finish. This might be all we get done today. I don't think we're going to get the flooring in like we originally thought. And there we go, the last tile. That was a long job. We probably spent a little over seven hours putting all these tiles in, but at least it's done. So we're going to let these cure overnight, and then tomorrow, we need to add the, uh, or sorry, we need to take the ledger boards off and then add the final two bottom rows of tile and get them done and let it cure. And then we probably won't grout probably for another day because we're going to move on to some other stuff. I think tomorrow we're also going to get the floors in, which should be really cool. So uh, yet again, thanks for checking out the video today. We got, made some really awesome progress and uh, this bathroom is going to come along real soon. So keep tuned. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. That really helps get it out in front of other people that might like to check it out too. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that to keep up with more videos. And if you want to see some other projects I have, I have some here on the screen and down in the description below as well.